Hello everyone. This time around, I want to talk about the notion of eugenics, which is basically selective breeding for what are considered desirable traits or selective breeding to remove undesirable traits. I have almost certainly totally oversimplified that, but that's basically eugenics. Is eugenics itself necessarily a bad idea? Well, I don't think so. Taken on its own, and without some wingnut in charge or what have you, eugenics is essentially uh, an outgrowth of regular evolution. Humans have particular preferences for their uh, breeding partners. And that, no matter what you do, you're not going to breed that out, because without those preferences, we'll end up selecting mates that are not going to provide viable offspring, uh, on, or at least more often. So there's a certain bias built in, so there's a certain minimum level of, I guess, eugenics built in na naturally. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. That's what keeps our species our species. And that's what keeps us surviving generation after generation. Uh, the selection for certain traits that improve childbirth or uh, improve the ability to uh, hunt for food or what have you have certainly driven our evolution over millennia and longer. The modern world, though, uh, has changed the evolutionary pressures quite significantly. And obviously, as a species, we haven't caught up with that. Uh, and we will eventually, assuming that our technological uh, society continues for a long enough period of time, the evolutionary pressures will change and different traits will come to the fore. But I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing for the long-term survival of our species. When you come down to it, if we breed out the very things that allowed us to achieve dominance and survival over a, an extended period of time, what happens when that technological backing disappears? Fortunately, our built-in innate preferences, uh, I think, will prevent that from happening ultimately. Uh, because the so-called beautiful people, uh, the healthy types, the athletic types and so on, are prized even by the non-athletic uh, intellectual types. Uh, so I think there's a pretty good chance that the species will survive in at least a viable form, even in the absence of technology. Well, anyway, back to eugenics. Uh, there have been many cases in the past where eugenics has led to some pretty nasty atrocities. Uh, and the obvious ones are things like the Nazis. But there have been things like sterilizing mental patients and things like that, and those are, have not been in necessarily in the uh, uncivilized world. These things have happened recently in the Western world. And, and this type of uh, atrocity is, well, done in the name of protecting the gene pool or what have you, is hard to defend. Now, I'm not saying that it's necessarily a good idea to have people with severe uh, uh, genetic defects having children. I think that we should be avoiding somehow. Uh, and we, should, we definitely need to restrict it to genetic defects and clear genetic defects that are deleterious to survival uh, or that severely handicap the ability of the uh, 
the unfortunate soul who carries the defect to function at a sufficient level to survive on their own. The problem is, with our incomplete understanding of genetics, we can't really separate what's a, in a lot of cases, what's a genetic effect and what's an environmental effect. Preventing someone who has a disability due to an environmental effect from reproducing is not improving the gene pool. In fact, it may be uh, harming it. Uh, nobody would, uh, would argue that someone who lost an arm in an accident, an auto accident, shouldn't be allowed to have children because they're deformed because they only have one arm. That's an environmental e effect. And so there's a lot of cases where developmental disorders and that sort of thing, they're not coming from a genetic cause, but an environmental cause. Either the, an environmental cause, something the mother was, uh, a drug the mother was taking, or anything like that during pregnancy, or uh, malnutrition during, uh, during childhood, or any number of things like that. And these things can lead to deformities and mental disorders and so on. And yet these same people, they'll, if they have children, will not pass on these disorders because they are not genetic and therefore their genetic code is actually sound. On the other hand, there are environmental effects that do damage genetics, genetic material, uh, such as radiation exposure. And there's a, a, a case where you might not want uh, someone who has had a substantial dose of radiation, even if it wasn't fatal, to have children, assuming that they haven't been rendered sterile as a result. Now, there are different ways of dealing with the eugenics. Uh, you, you could just uh, find the people that uh, you shouldn't reproduce and kill them. That is obviously despicable. Um, because even if they have undesirable traits, they may be capable of contributing to society in one way or another. Simply killing them isn't necessarily going to be beneficial. The same way you wouldn't think it was right to kill someone just because they can't have kids. Uh, if they're born sterile, they're certainly not going to harm the gene pool if they can't have kids. So, it, it doesn't... Uh, the only uh, defensible reason for killing these people is resource uh, availability. If you don't have the resources available to support the population, then of course you have to get rid of the least useful members of the population to guarantee the best chance of the survival of the population as a whole. That is survival calculus and it is brutal. And nobody wants to be in that position. So we'll assume that's not the case. Because survival calculus gets so brutal that you really don't want to think about it if you don't have to. So we don't want to kill them. That, that just leads to nasty atrocities. So what's our next best option? Well, you know, you could sterilize them, uh, you know, forcibly or, or what have you. But I don't know that that's necessarily the best choice either because that can have other deleterious health consequences depending how you go about it. And also, a lot of the cases, these are people who uh, maybe don't have the mental capacity to understand, so they can't give consent. Uh, so you'd be doing it forcibly. Uh, I don't know that that's necessarily a, the best choice. And then, of course, you have, uh, you have breeding programs where you have to apply for a license to have children and then they do a bunch of checks and so on and decide yes or no. That's probably the least barbaric way of doing things, although you do have the problem of whether you trust the people making the choice, making the decision in the end. 
And of course, you, you have to decide what you're going to do about those who break the rules. Do you punish the children of those uh, couples or do, you, uh, or do you do something else? So uh, there's a lot of potential problems that come up with any kind of a eugenics program. Now, they're not necessarily insurmountable and a lot of the problems are cultural. If you had a culture that actually believed strongly in the eugenics, then you wouldn't have a lot of the objections that you might get from a Westerner, uh, a modern Westerner. And of course, being a modern Westerner, uh, that's the perspective I have. Uh, that's the perspective I'm coming from. Now, let's just assume that we can come up with a eugenics program that's palatable to us, that we can live with, that we can live with ourselves for imposing it on everybody, and that we can accept that we can live within it. Uh, it, it now, the question is, is it really a good idea? Is it going to be beneficial long term? And this is the part that is actually unclear. And because we have a limited understanding of genetics currently, we can't be sure that what we're selecting against or for is actually going to be beneficial long term. Uh, something, for instance, there's uh, certain uh, diseases which uh, affect a massive number of people, uh, and yet a certain defect that is generally less good at survival actually gives you a substantial advantage in the face of that particular disease. And that means that the population as a whole survives better because you have those people with that mutation. And then eventually uh, the people without that mutation uh, they die down and then the number of people with it grows to the point where you get a level of herd immunity, you know, just like vac vaccinations work. And then that protects the, the now surviving minority without that defect and then their population starts to increase again because they are better at overall survival. So that's going to necessarily uh, impair population survival if you breed out that less, than, less good trait. So you need to be careful because it's not always the obvious thing that uh, is problematic, right? Uh, and it's not always... You know, like, for instance, some of the things that come along with very high intelligence are not so great for individual survival. Like, you get some of these, uh, these disorders that come along with, that seem to come along with higher intelligence. Uh, I suspect that's not really the case. I suspect that if you had an objective examination of the general, general population, you'd find out that wasn't the case. But... Suppose that by breeding out certain undesirable characteristics that, like mental disorders that do have a genetic component, say you breed those components out, you might potentially end up uh, creating a population of people that are substantially less intelligent. That, and you may actually be impairing the uh, long-term survival of the species because you are removing the intelligence that allowed us to get where we are. That doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't do, we couldn't do something, but we need to understand the consequences a lot better before we embark on wholesale eugenics programs to uh, change certain characteristics. There are, of course, defects that it's absolutely clear are problematic and, uh, you know, physical deformities and so on. And those, it's pretty clear, uh, 
that uh, as some sort of a eugenics program to prevent those from proliferating, that could easily be beneficial. And preventing certain uh, other known genetic disorders uh, like Down syndrome from proliferating could potentially be beneficial as well. Um, but, uh, you know, you've got to draw a line somewhere, and this is where it gets dicey. And because it's not clear where we can, where we can safely and properly draw that line, eugenics is a hard sell. And if I was given a, uh, say, a vote on whether to enable a eugenics program, I think no matter what the the uh, specifics of the program were. And even though I generally support the idea of eugenics, I do not think I would actually vote in favor of such a program. Because our current understanding of genetics and heredity and all of that is so incomplete still that we just don't know what the long-term effects are going to be. And it's, you know, it's, it's not something I can in good conscience saddle future generations with because the consequences are so unknown. At the very least, normal, natural species propagation, we know what the results of that are likely to be continued existence of the species. That's how we got where we are. So the long-term effects of that are not likely to be substantially deleterious. So there you have it. Uh, that's my ramble on the topic of eugenics for this, this point in time. I definitely reserve the right to change my opinion on this one. It's not an easy topic. It's not something that people generally want to think about. But judging by some of the science fiction shows uh, that are showing up on television lately, I think more people are, in fact, thinking about it. And it's definitely a topic that does bear thinking about at the very least. And that's the whole point uh, of making this particular video. It's something that people need to think about and we need to really consider if it's a good thing, a bad thing, or an indifferent thing. Anyway, uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. And if you've watched this long, thanks for watching.